Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves episode 6 and it's our special post-election episode. And we are thrilled. I'm here with Tim Wilms. Hi, Tim. Hi. And I just can't describe this feeling. Um, we are over the moon right now. I mean, Donald Trump, he is the president of the United States and that's the biggest thing ever. <laughs> well, pre pre president-elect, so he takes office uh, 20th of January 2017, so we still have two and a half months of Obama, but he did it. He defied everyone, he defied uh, the media, uh, the political establishment, the elites, the politically correct social justice warriors. He, he smashed them all and he's going to be president soon. He 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 did his he smashed the media he did that's i think one of the most important things this campaign um you know we all know the media was biased towards hillary and they lost they lied they exaggerated they bribed all these rape victims but they lost and the people voted the people chose him the people chose his policies and the people love his policies and that's understandable that's I mean, that's it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, well, the mainstream politicians, they, they weren't solving the concerns of ordinary Americans. I mean, they weren't, uh, weren't doing anything about uh, immigration. They weren't, they weren't doing anything to, to help ordinary people. And, they weren't, uh, there was, and there was also, not to mention this growing political correctness in our culture, the uh, social justice warriors were taking over uh, universities, and there was just this real uh, culture of illiberalism emerging in America. And uh, luckily the ordinary folk, they stood up and say, no, you know, we want to live in a, a free, safe country. And they voted for Trump. They did. And um, yeah, I think it was, I think it's just an example of how the totalitarian left is sort of losing right now, I think, um, because Trump did win after all. Um, but the thing is, we are not over yet. They still exist. They are rallying. Well, they, they, they've already tonight. There's major protests in uh, there uh, quite a few US, US cities. Uh, yeah, even though they lost fair and square, they're they're out there saying, uh, you know, no, we we will not stand for this. I wonder if there's a because after Brexit there was a petition to redo the the, <laughs> the vote. I wonder if they'll, they'll have a petition to redo the, the the presidential election. Oh no, the people didn't really mean it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I just wouldn't. Res they are, after all, they are totalitarian. You know, they are. Um, it's the left. The left is quite authoritarian, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. They are questioning this democratic decision. Um, they can't take it. They're triggered. And well, they were, some well, of them are asking luck. for tough. the world to be destroyed. They want, they want, <laughs> they want to go to Mars. They want an asteroid to hit the Earth. They're like, oh, this is so, you know, awful. There, there's no safe space for them left to hide. There's, uh, there, yeah, there isn't. We're, we're at uh, peak triggering. We are, we are. It's, it's peak triggering season. You know, trigger me timbers. Um, but it's, it's. I think it's mainly the rural people we should thank i think because well, and the people people in the, the in, in the suburbs as well the proper proper suburbs yeah. not the inner cities exactly yeah because all the inner cities all those places they they were all blue i mean if you look at if you look at new york for example um if you if you saw the map then large swaths of that state were red but it's just new york was blue and that sort of pushed it towards Hillary. Um, even in Texas, the same thing, in Dallas, in Houston, in Austin, um, all the cities were blue, but it was the actual other, the non-metro areas, the non-inner city areas that were red, and they saved us. And well, the, I can't the, more grateful. Yeah, the, the, what's called the, the Rust Belt states, you know, middle America, where the working class yeah. is, Ohio, Pennsylvania, yeah. uh, Wisconsin, and, and Michigan, they, they all went for, for Trump. Michigan was the, the big upset. I mean, that, uh, that's where Detroit is, which has been, which industry has been decimated. It's been ruled by Democrats for it has. Uh, for uh, decades, but yet they voted they voted for Trump. 
They did. And we've all seen the meme where it says, you know, Hiroshima survived the nuclear bomb, but Detroit didn't survive the Democrats. Um, we, I love that meme, personally. And, you know, I, I'm actually quite surprised that Pennsylvania went for Trump because um, it was it was marginal. It was just there, you know. Um, I thought it would be for Hillary. Yeah, well, it's always been a swing state, but the Democrats have, have won it uh, in the most recent elections. I think they've won it since 1988. So even though it is a swing state, okay. it, it, it largely votes for the Democrats. But yeah, it, the, the, the swing to Trump was, was so great in that, in that area yeah. of America that yeah. it, went for, went, it went for him as well. And of course, he won. He did, yeah. He won uh, Florida as well. Uh, you know, yes, they, yes, uh, he did. The, the media were talking about all oh, these Hispanics are going to come out and vote against <laughs> Trump, and yet, uh, yet he still won. He did. He won Florida. He won Ohio, which was another major battleground state. Mm. Um, but I think the the media did say that Hispanics will come out. I feel like they did in New Mexico, because um, New Mexico went for Hillary. Yeah, but yeah, but the thing is, neighboring Arizona, neighboring Arizona went for Trump, so that's a bit weird. Because I thought, you know, they're all bordering Mexico, so why would Arizona, you know, go for Trump? But um, even Phoenix, because that was like the major city that voted for Trump, full on, like the whole city was red, and they voted for Trump, and that was amazing. But I'm I'm a bit surprised that. New Mexico is close to the border, but Arizona is also close to the border, but they it's both got different results. Yeah, it's interesting how these, like some states right next to each other vote completely different ways. I mean, Utah yeah, and Colorado yeah. are next to each other, yet they went different ways. Different ways, yeah. yeah. They did. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he won. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, it's a it's it's a new beginning. It's uh, well, hopefully, it's the end of uh, beginning of the end for the progressive left and you know their um, their way of trying to control us is on the is on the way out. It is, yeah. I mean, this was the thing we all well, it's it's the thing we as in the right wing wanted. Um, it's the thing that the unshackles were so vehemently supporting for months and. You know, it's it's a victory over the left, and they are losing. They're on a losing streak. Um, yeah, I just don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, yeah. All the all the polling said oh, Hillary is you know going to win it comfortably in the end, but you just yeah. got this feeling that no, no, th th this movement can't be stopped. You know, Trump is is destined to win. There's just you know, you, all, all you can do is just see him winning. You can't you can't you can't see this movement being stopped. You can't, you know, the Trump train will never stop. Um, the deplorables, we will never fail. So it's patriotic, really. But I, we did see um, reactions. We saw very interesting reactions, both in the mainstream and the social media among yes. celebrities. The mainstream, um, their faces, that was worth it. <laughs> that, yeah, that was the... I mean, best, it was like the dessert. All, all the all the mainstream channels that that I was watching. So there was uh, Sky News, uh, CNN, uh, ABC News America, yeah. um, even yeah. Fox. Like because they had uh, Megan Kelly, Brett Bear, and Chris Wallace on, who were sort of um, their journalists. Even they were were, were shocked and uh, I dare say yeah. triggered. <laughs> I, yeah, they were. I mean. Fox is Republican friendly, but even they were shocked. No one, not many people knew. You didn't even know he would win. I mean, I knew he would win, <laughs> but not many people didn't know that knew that he would actually win. And it was a shock, and I like the shock. Yeah. Um, but you know, we did see um, in the mainstream media, we did see people almost crying on the verge of crying. Anderson Cooper, oh wow. Um, uh, we, we saw... Channel Nine in Australia, for example. Yeah, we saw, and of course, the the project last night. I mean, Wally yes. Ali was he he was all there at Hillary's victory party. Like that's where he thought the, <laughs> the party was going to be. Yeah. yeah, and we had um some newspapers, even including as far away as Germany, where people had actual articles ready to welcome Hillary. They were like, you know, welcome, Madam President, or or whatever. But and there was that, it went uh, down the trash. And there was that Newsweek cover as well. Yes, there was that. Yeah, that that article there was, and all all in vain. You know, did they actually? Did they print that magazine? 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> See, there's no but, excuse yeah, and... for that these days. Yeah. <laughs> and um, celebrities, that's another thing. That's another topic altogether. Their reaction. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, 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 Hillary was there with, what was it, Beyonce, Jay Z, yeah. Katy Perry, Lady Gaga. Oh, yes, yes. Marley Cyrus. Yeah, uh, uh, all the celebrities saying that yeah. uh, they they'd move if Trump if if Trump won. Uh, we're we're yeah. gonna see if they actually follow through with that now. We, yeah, I mean Whoopi Goldberg, she said she will move. Mm. Um, George Lopez, he said he will move. Well, start packing, George. Start packing, Whoopi. <laughs> um, you know, move to Mexico or yeah. Canada or wherever you want to go. Um. But yeah, I saw um, a picture of Lady Gaga, actually. She was outside Trump Tower, and she was holding a sign saying, Love Trump's Hate. Yeah. Wow. That's just ignorant, you know, stupid. Your signs stupid. are worthless now. Were very, they, they are. They're worth nothing. Um, no one cares about you. No one really cares. I mean, huh. most people voted for Trump. Most people don't care about the, the celebrities. They just, you know, they are cut off from the people. Yeah, and I think this is really going to shake up uh, the mainstream media and uh, popular culture, because despite the fact that yeah. the media was so in favour of Hillary, uh, you know, we yeah. saw in those uh, WikiLeaks uh, emails the amount of collusion with the mainstream media, and of course the fact that, you know, almost every celebrity was 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 for Hillary. She still lost, <laughs> despite all of this. She lost. Despite, despite everything, and also despite all the money that that Hillary had from you know all the all of Wall Street and other business people, she still lost. She lost. I mean, the media was lying. The media was lying for her. The media was exaggerating for her. As I said, we saw we didn't need WikiLeaks. We saw how the media was cutting off people if they was if they started to criticize Hillary. I mean, CNN they actually cut off people when they began to say something negative about Hillary and they were like, oh, whoops, no, we lost the connection. No, they did it purposely and you could tell from their faces. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's karma, it's karma. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Uh, and obviously uh, in the age of the internet, there's now heaps of alternative media such as obviously yes. Breitbart is where yeah. we go for a, for a lot of our news. I mean, uh, I hope, hope <laughs> that uh, they... they certainly expand and um because i hope they do yeah of, uh, a trump uh tv network i certainly hope uh that that goes ahead I, I would love it i would love that um you know that would be the dream job for me <laughs> um but yeah um i was gonna say i was gonna say that all the celebrities were supporting hillary i just find it i find it really interesting how caitlin jenner was supporting Trump. <laughs> yeah, she she was head of the the trannies for Trump. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah, she was the trannies for Trump, and I I found it really interesting because you know we have all these progressive, you know, pro LGBTQRSTUVWXYZ celebrities who are supporting Trump, but we have an actual transsexual again controversial controversial transsexual who is supporting Trump. So they were the others were against Trump. She was supporting Trump, and and don't forget, uh, Trump, Trump's biggest fan was of course Miley Yiannopoulos. Oh yes. yeah, he, he yeah he he uh, uh, posted on Facebook. You know, I told I told you this was going to happen. He yeah he did he did and he was there in the in the special in the in the this party um, the, the press last room night where no one was there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, but it has been one heck of a ride um you know all our dreams came true dreams do come true we had brexit here we had pauline hansen elected now we have trump next who knows brexit next maybe um we have a lot the future we will talk about the future soon um in the in the segment but social media that's a, that's a different topic which is of course dominated by 
um, uh, by the left, I mean uh, Facebook yes. uh, censors, uh, or, uh, censors conservative accounts, uh, suppresses conservative news. Not to mention Twitter is basically yep. full of um, for, you know left progressive people. I mean Twitter, you know, people think that Twitter is like representative of uh, you know the mainstream, and we've seen you know this meltdown from all these uh, feminists, progressive activists. Uh, uh, Black Lives Matter people saying, "Oh, this is you know the 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 worst thing ever," and they're just like <laughs> they, they they don't know how to process it. They don't. I mean, the only thing I mean, they're giving us lefty tears to drink. You know, we have lefty tears to enjoy, but you know, it's Twitter was full of posts, tweets. I should say Twitter was full of tweets, um, complaining, grumbling. Um, what else? feminists complaining about sexism you know we elected a sexist we elected a racist how dare they how do yeah. people do that well, and, and, and they said that you know hillary or like uh, my favorite line from the feminist was hillary has been a lifelong uh public service <laughs> so much good and yet her bully got elected oh you know i can't yeah. believe that women are treated like this in 2016 you know just saying like oh. i read that uh, it, some headlines were like that. Um, we had tweets saying democracy is gone. You know the republic. The republic is gone. Hello, the republic was saved. Yeah. And, and not forgetting that uh, there was like so much. You know they talk so much about racism. There was so much hatred for white people. Like all these you know stupid poor white trash voting for uh, Trump. Oh God, they're ignorant and I hate them. Like you know you're you're being racist then. Exactly. That's completely racist. You. We have black people saying that against whites, but the thing is, no one's complaining. I mean, the whites aren't complaining because, you know, white people know that they're ignorant and that they, we shouldn't pay attention to them. You know, white people know that those people are ignorant. Um, I mean, we had black people who were just thrilled at Trump getting elected. We had Diamond and Silk, who are famous YouTubers. I love them. They, they were just so thrilled. They went live on Facebook um, and they, they are black. I love, I love their catchphrase. They, they tell the other black people, uh, get off that democratic plantation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> that's, that's quite triggering, isn't it? Almost. Mm. Uh, if a, if a white person said that. Yeah, I love that. Um, very sort of, it goes back to, the, to those times, you know, we shouldn't, you know, we, those triggering times. But yeah, just social media was, I mean, we had social media, we had people who were really happy. I mean, that was good. That was nice to see. We had Austin Peterson, for example. He said um, he was criticizing the not my president. Oh, that was another one. The not my president hashtag. We saw lots of people saying that, um, you know, Trump is hashtag not my president. Um, and about Austin, Austin Peterson from the Libertarian Party, he said, you know, that hashtag is just stupid. It, it's, it, it was a democratic decision and you shouldn't be saying that. Um, we also had Katy Perry who was saying, we will revolt. I found quite funny, um, you know. <laughs> I mean, you can't argue with, with, with the results. I mean, uh, you know, Trump won, like that's, you know, f are, are you just going to deny, like cancel democracy, right? People don't know what's good for, uh, good for yeah. them. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's why they uh, why they lost this election is because they had such a disdain for ordinary people, and the ordinary people said, uh, "You know, no, we've had enough of you." Yeah, and that's that's a classic leftist thing to do. You know, they think they know what's best for everyone, so they're like, "Well, you know, people didn't vote for Trump because if they wanted to; they were just confused." That sort of thing, classic leftist argument. But that leads on to a very important topic. Which is free speech and oh, is that where talk about the polling first? Oh um, yes, the polling was wrong. Oh yes, course, yes, uh, polling, yes. Poll um, Trump should be saying to Nate Silver uh, from five thirty eight, Nate, you're fired because <laughs> he got <laughs> it fired, wrong. He yeah. predicted uh, Hillary winning the popular vote uh, by three percentage points, and that uh, she would get. 293 electoral votes and that she would win Pennsylvania, <laughs> Missi Michigan, uh, uh, and Florida. Yeah, and 
Trump won all of that. And, you know, I mean, there's the, the only uh, uh, Hillary won Virginia, Nevada, uh, the two, yeah. uh, and Colorado. Uh, New Hampshire is still too close to call. Um, so we don't we don't know how it looks like going to uh, Hillary. But yeah, uh, doesn't matter. All, all, the poll, all the polls got it wrong. Uh, you know, they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And of course, yeah, all the elites got it wrong. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that's why they they uh, may, uh, tried to make the stock market crashed. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, all the leftist elites who were democratic oriented, um, especially Bloomberg, the Bloomberg, the owner Bloomberg, um, he 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 would have been so triggered because he was very pro Hillary. Um, they lost. You know, the leftist elites, they were cut off from the people. They didn't know what the people want. They didn't know the media. The media doesn't know the people. And, and it was surprising all, for them. And it's also the fact that, you know, uh, it's called the Bradley effect, uh, which is that people are too afraid to uh, tell a pollster, of, you know, what their, their real intention yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, like that's, yeah. it happened in the, the UK general election. The polls said that Labour would win. Same with Brexit. They said that Remain would win. <laughs> but the people in a privacy of, uh, 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 privacy of the voting booth uh, voted for Trump. They did. They voted for Brexit first. They voted for Trump, mm. and that's, that, that's a relief, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, the thing is, I didn't really focus much on the polls, to be honest, because I, 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 was, I did know that Brexit didn't represent the polls. So I was like, you know, we'll wait and see. You know, the polls are something, but they don't represent it correctly. So let's wait and see. Yeah. Um, we had a different poll with us, um, which Damien Ferry um reported on. And that was by Professor Lichtman. He, he almost got it right. Um, with because the thing is, he that he used he used that method, the thirteen points method, to predict, and he got everything right since 1984. Um, and he got this right. So you know, his his poll his poll was quite accurate. <laughs> there there'll be there there'll certainly be still a lot of people who predicted this, saying, "I told you so." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and it's interesting, uh, in the same week that the plebiscite was defeated, like I saw some social media chatter like, oh, I'm so glad that oh, yeah. the plebiscite didn't go ahead because it might yeah. have been voted down as well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, they clearly their world is crumbling around them. It is. And that's, it's, it, might, it, it will sound mean, but that's what we want to see. You know, we want to see their world crumble. <laughs> There's no safe spaces left. Nope, nope. Trump is here, um, and there are no spa safe spaces. And you know, there there is no space. There is no space for their PC culture either anymore because free speech all the way. Trump is here. Free speech is supported. Um, he will protect people's right to say what they want. <laughs> I mean, That's relief. Yeah, I mean, I think this was one of the biggest issues that political correctness had had just taken over, uh, well, the the Western world, identity politics, yeah. you know, with with all of, uh, you know, the with all the you know ge uh, gender pronouns. That was the that yeah was a big, a big thing <laughs> of uh, people wanting uh, to resegregate uh, universities. Yes, to have safe yeah. spaces for blacks. Uh, black Black Lives Matter, uh, com complaining every time um, you know, uh, a black person was killed by a police officer, but didn't care if a, if a white person was killed yeah. or uh, yeah. a black person was murdered by another black person. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the number of white people who were murdered by blacks much higher than the number of blacks murdered by whites. PC culture prevented the actual issues from being spoken as well. I mean, we had, you know, we couldn't... Obama didn't even say Islamic terrorism. All he said was terrorism. Or you know, he didn't address the issue. So, how was he meant to solve the actual problem if he didn't properly address the issue? Um, but now it's not like that because we have the opportunity to address the issue properly. We we can say we can we can officially say Islamic terrorism or whatever, and actually target the problem instead of just having this airy fairy PC, you know, just terrorism, hashtag, not all Muslims, hashtag sort of thing. Um, the next yeah. time someone says to you, you can't say that, say to them, last time I checked, yeah. you know, Trump won. I think the people yeah. are on my side. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, democratically, we have the upper ground. So, you know, just sit down. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I, and it's yeah. Uh, we now know that the First Amendment is is safe for the time being. I mean, yeah, uh, it is. Trump will get to appoint two or three Supreme Court justices. Well, it, well, it means the First and Second Amendment are safe. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, with the second with the second one, you know, we know that Hillary was against that. She kept lying about that, um, as she always does. That's her speciality. But you know, she was against that. She was against the first. Well, she wasn't openly against it, but she showed signs that she didn't really support the First Amendment um, because she didn't want people to be triggered. Um, but, you know, no more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I think it's really good that, you know, we're, we're now a bit freer to... Oh, well, I'm hoping yeah. we're more free to to say how we feel, and also we were talking about before the yeah the death of the mainstream media. Now that they're no longer will no longer be the the gatekeepers of what you can and can't say, it ho yeah, exactly. hopefully means that uh, you no know, we've you know we're now more you know unafraid because there's you know mainstream media has lost its power to sort of you know shame people make people apologize for you know saying the wrong thing triggering somebody <laughs> yeah i mean the power the alternative media has taken some of that power you know people are switching to those sources instead of using mainstream media you know they've lost their power See, with this election they've lost their power and of course uh, the other big issue uh, apart from free speech and political correctness was uh, immigration. Uh, the yeah. wall is going to be built. And if the use, wall will be built. Uh, and to use Trump's, uh, tr uh, Trump's words, it's going to be a great, beautiful wall. Yep. And there will be, remember, there will be a beautiful a beautiful door as well for the legal migrants remember mm. the media was um was really good at cutting that part out you know it was only we will build a wall but they didn't show the part where he said we will build a big beautiful door um but he will do that um because, so you know yeah. you can't just say he's a racist <laughs> i mean yeah uh you know we don't live in america so we don't know yeah. uh how big the problem is with uh, yeah. illegal immigration but we've read the statistics about uh, um, how much illegal immigration costs the costs the American uh, taxpayer, the various crimes committed by illegal immigrants? Hundreds of billions. You have hundreds of billions spent on the on the on the on illegal immigration on, on illegal immigrants. That's that's one reason why the border patrol officers supported Trump, um, because he had a very good plan. Because you know all these people who are coming in from Mexico, um, Hillary used to say this because the government there was just sending them up, you know, it doesn't matter, um, but the wall will prevent that. And yeah. Mexico will pay for it, and he's also, I think. And he's also going to introduce the, the ban on Muslim immigration as well, which that was, yeah. a, bit, that was a big, important policy of his. And that's yeah. probably one of the, the main things that switched me over to supporting him, the fact, because... You know, we we saw we, we saw like basically uh, earlier this year with Orlando, like you know the threat that Islam poses to America. Yeah, we did. Um, and to be specific, he did say it was going to be a temporary ban because until he finds actual solution to this Islamic problem, there will be a ban. That's it. Um, but people are just exaggerating, overstating. You know, he will ban Muslims. No, it will, it will be a temporary ban. Yeah, which which is what what we need because we're seeing you know the yeah. disaster of you know open borders in Europe uh, with yes, you know, migrants, uh, uh, millions of migrants coming in from the Middle East, and we're seeing you know migrant crime on the on the rise and the the danger to you know women and uh, LGBT people. Yeah, I mean, I said many many people journalists there are calling it ethnic war zones. Germany's, they're having ghettos, they build ghettos there, and they're being called ethnic war zones. I mean, what what more do you need to realize that this open borders migration policy is bad? Angela Merkel regrets it. She openly regrets it. She said that. Um, what else do you want? You know, Angela yeah. Merkel is like one of the biggest leaders of the, of the leftist side. But... And in Europe, we're, we're seeing a terrorist incident pretty much every week for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had the we had the memes yeah. where I, I, it was I, like, yeah, it was one. 
I noticed that we hadn't had uh, many terrorist attacks for a while in the yeah. lead up to the election. So yeah. I, I almost speculate whether the terrorists had decided to to hold off for the time being in the hope that uh, we would forget and Hillary <laughs> would win, and so then they'd be back on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I saw like really, really funny pictures of like um, well, memes of um, you know, Arab looking people with suitcases. I'm watching the watching the TV, and they're like, you know, time time to move, you know, pack up. Um, but the thing is, he did say he will deport. He did say he will deport illegals. Um, does that mean? The thing is, does that mean he will deport children who were born in America? Uh, I think so, but uh, okay. you, you've got to do that as well because then it will just encourage uh, illegal immigrants who are already here to have have children. Yeah, as, ag- ag- true, ag- true. As, as they, yeah, as they're called. So of course you have to have to deport deport them as well. Sure. Yeah, you do, you do because yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a very um. And it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a hassle if people start to have children just yeah. to stay. Yeah. And also, uh, I think the. Uh, the message that Trump had on immigration that, you know, the immigration policy, it should be to benefit the the people who live in that country, not be a globalist yeah. policy yeah. to uh, exactly. benefit people yeah. in other countries. I mean, you know, people in America, they vote for a president to look after their interests, you know, not to yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, look after, you know, all these people in in every other country. So, you know, they, no one has the right to, to come to America. Like, there's no, like that's just a made up right to, you know, move freely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they choose. They have, they have proper procedures you need to follow. And if you follow those procedures, then you will um, get into America. If you follow the proper way, the proper method, the path, the legal method, then you can get into America. And that's, and that's, that's the best thing there is. I mean, we had Latinos for Trump, who was, so Latinos supporting Trump, because they were quite frankly sick of seeing illegals coming um, when they came there the correct way. Um, and it's, it was unfair because they came the correct way and the illegals were just coming in, giving all this money and giving all this um, funding. Um, and, you know, it's unfair, really. That's why we had Latinos for Trump. Yeah. And we also uh, you know, had bla- uh, blacks for Trump as well. We did, uh, yeah. yeah. LGBT for Trump. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a broad, broad coalition of people. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, we had the gays for Trump, the the twinks for Trump. We had the women for Trump. Um, I, I think the women for Trump and the gays for Trump or LGBTs for Trump movement was sort of like um, a slap in the face towards those Tumblrina snowflake LGBTs who were supporting Hillary. You know, they were like, Trump is sexist. Trump is homophobic. Well, the LGBTs for Trump, they used this movement to show that he isn't. In fact, he was holding an LGBT flag on yeah. November the 1st, I think it was. Yeah, and he said um, in his uh, convention speech, I'll do everything I can to protect our LGBTQ citizens. Yeah, he did. I'm a hateful he did. foreign I- ideology. And don't forget, Peter Thiel spoke at the Republican convention as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we had Milo. Mm. Um, he was a big supporter. Trump knows him. He was invited because yesterday in the speech, in um, at the end when Trump gave, the the people there were actually invited um, personally, and Milo was there. Um, Trump isn't homophobic, and the women for Trump again. The women for Trump were there because um, they know that Trump isn't sexist, and they wanted to tell he's the just, world that Trump isn't sexist. He's, he's just attracted to women, or beautiful women. Exactly. Like that's just a natural yeah. attraction. I mean, it is. It's there, there's never been actually a serious allegation of sexual assault against him. We we proved that those allegations were were false. They were bribed. Um, we had sources saying $500,000 were given to Zama Zervos from The Apprentice. Um, you know, we had Alicia Machado falsely accusing him of things when we have videos of her laughing with him and talking to the media with him, you know, complimenting him full on. But now Alicia Machado obviously bribed I'm um, given money to to support Hillary and make up lies against Trump. No one bought that. Most yeah. people didn't buy that. He won because of that. And of course, the left can, can completely ignored the the real uh, sexual predator in the campaign, which was the yeah. uh, proposed uh, first gentleman, Bill Clinton, who, uh, yeah. Yeah, according to Roger Stone's book, has raped twenty seven women. 
Exactly. I mean, those are actual claims because there aren't any evidence against... And he has actually had any evidence. to pay out uh, settlements uh, for, for... He's had, exactly. He's actually had the thing... Yeah, it's quite official, aren't they? Um... But these are just, they just came out of nowhere. I mean, they had all the time in the world. It was 35 years, you know, they had time to report. Why they chose this, this particular time. We had we had witnesses debunking them, come on. Yeah, no, you know, no one buys that. Uh, and everyone thought that Access Hollywood uh, tape would be, <laughs> the, be the end of him. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I um, I understand if you found something. I, I would say it, well, it did sound quite unrefined. I would I would admit that unrefined and quite crude, but not offensive. It's natural. He he said, and they let you. No, that's not sexual assault. He he acknowledged that they give you give you permission, and they let you. Mm. Um, they, you know, that's not. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, like, there's no actual evidence that he has, you know, just grabbed beautiful women's pussies. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't any evidence. He was, he was just, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. He was just talking about it. You know, it's natural for people to say that, and there are lots of women who say similar things about men. Yeah, men shouldn't be uh, f- felt to feel ashamed because they're heterosexual. Exactly, and that backlash against that was just another culturally Marxist sort of attempt um, at shutting him down, at making people feel bad for being straight. Mm. Really yeah. pathetic. Which brings us to, uh, we've touched on it before, but obviously the, yeah. the working class decided that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the Democrats, you know, who claim that, you know, they care about the poor, the, the downtrodden, uh, you know, th- uh, the working class, they decided, no, you failed us for generations. We're going to go with, with, with Trump. Yeah, um, Trump reached out to them. He did. He did that very well because we know Hillary Clinton. She had relations with the Wall Street corporations. She does seem to support corporate welfare, for example. Um, yeah, she you was know, the Wall Street candidate. She was. She was a Wall Street candidate. She said, she actually said in a speech, she, she called low social capital Americans low social capital Americans, she calls them a bucket of losers. That was from WikiLeaks. And, you know, thank God she's not here. And don't forget the uh, basket of deplorables comment. Yeah. Yes, that didn't go well. That actually didn't go well um, Uh, for her. (laughs) I mean, we've seen, like, basically because of, you know, massive government uh, intrusion into business and the economy, uh, excessive taxes, you know, that's why we're seeing jobs uh, disappear from America because it's just uh, just too expensive for companies to do business. And so, um, I mean, Trump has got a a good tax package and he's going to, you know, finally cut some of the regulations uh, that, are, that, are, that have been piling up. Uh, so, yeah, the, the working class have decided, yeah, it's time, to, it's time for something new. You know, we want to yeah. you know, be, be an industry powerhouse again. Yeah, exactly. The working class has realized that it's time for, for actual capitalism. You know, um, America was once the beacon of capitalism, but n- right now America isn't even the freest economy in the world. Australia is freer than America in terms of the economic freedom. Um, but the working class has realized, no, we need free market capitalism to actually make sure our country prospers, to make sure that we prosper. And that's a, that's a good realization. Um, and the election results supported that. Yeah. And yeah, and all these, uh, like we talked about, uh, in Michigan and Detroit, uh, yeah. a lot of these uh, I- uh, industrial areas, they'd been ruled by Democrats for, for, uh, yeah. for so many years. And as Trump himself said, what have you got to lose? You know, if you've been failed by, by these politicians for so long. Why not try something for different? For decades, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they've been failing for decades. Detroit is just, it's, it's really bad. Detroit is really bad. We've seen pictures, um, and they've been ruled by Democrats. But you know, it's time for a change. They know it's time for a change. That's a good thing because the change, um, it's not progressive change. It's actually quite. Uh, it's more of a traditional change because they want to have the proper 
capitalism for uh, for themselves. Um, they don't want this new progressive socialist um, leftist, and that's a relief for me because you know I sort of lost hope with many Americans because um, we had the media talking about the socialist um, agenda. You know, the media supporting so- supporting socialism um, in hidden ways, but you know people didn't want that. So that's a quite a relief for me. Okay, so let's talk about now the the future for for both for both sides in this election. So we'll move on yeah. to the the Democrats. Where do they go from here? Because they thought they they had a had a victory in the in the in the bag, but not only have they lost the presidency, they won't control uh, the House of Representatives or the Senate. Uh, they only uh, control nineteen out of fifty governorships. Uh, I mean, they really. <laughs> uh, the American people have really given them a big slap down. They have, and for good reason. What did they do? What did they do? I mean, we had Obamacare. So, you know, all their policies, all their economic policies were bad. But in terms of their future, you know, um, well, one one thing is clear. Obamacare will be scrapped. Yeah, That's a good gone. thing. It's gone. Goodbye. Bye, don't, Felicia. Don't uh, the renewable energy uh, uh, targets that Obama set, uh, the Paris Climate Agreement, they, they will all go. Yeah, all gone. Bye, Felicia. You know, goodbye to all those unnecessary, regressive climate change policies, greeny policies. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know where they, where, where they could go now. Yeah. Well, they, 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 I bet they're probably thinking that they should have gone with Bernie now. I mean, uh, you know, we, yeah. we we saw from WikiLeaks that the Democratic primary was rigged in favour of Hillary. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah. yeah, but they couldn't, uh, Democrats, they couldn't find a way to rig the general election. <laughs> they couldn't, yeah. That was scary. Um, that because we had videos of people showing that the polls or the polling booths they were sort of switching from Trump to Hillary. Um, but you know there weren't any many problems. Um, if that did happen, if the election was in fact rigged, um, well then th- the thing is it just shows that Trump actually got more supporters if if it was rigged towards the Democrats. Uh, and yeah. Uh... Uh, all of the polling uh, showed that Bernie Sanders uh, beat beat all the other Republican challengers yeah. while Hillary Clinton yeah. uh, was struggling. So uh, I think that, yeah, Bernie could have, because his message to uh, what was to the working class and to the forgotten he people, was, yeah. Yeah, it's just that his solutions were all terrible. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he is a socialist, ultimately. Um, to be honest, to be honest, since he is a socialist, I actually might support Hillary over Bernie. Just saying, because you but, know policies are important. But there was a but there was a lot of uh, uh, Bernie supporters who either didn't vote, uh, voted for Jill Stein, or voted for Trump. Yeah, yeah, because um, we actually got the thing. Because um, the thing is, since Bernie wasn't chosen, the Trump campaign actually got um, Bernie supporters. Because they knew that the election was rigged, and many Bernie supporters they hate Hillary, they hate her, um, they hate her guts because they know she is fueled by Wall Street. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, let's also talk about the the Libertarian Party. They got Gary Johnson yeah. got a measly three percent. I was hearing from other Libertarians, Gary Johnson's going to get fifteen percent. Oh, he could even <laughs> you know uh, win, a, win a state and the. You know, there are all these, uh, you know, grand predictions, but despite, you know, getting more media attention uh, than any libertarian candidate before, I mean, there were two CNN yeah. town halls, he was on some of the late night talk shows, he only managed uh, 3%. And I think yeah. this is because he ran such a disastrous campaign. I mean, uh, he, did, he, yeah. he, he said that, you know, no, open borders are great. Uh, uh, there, there's no problem with immigration at all. Uh, you know, try to appeal to you know all these politically correct social justice warrior people, and uh, just completely misread the mood of the American people. He did. We might have seen a different result if we saw Austin Peterson um, as a candidate, but but um, Gary Johnson was in in many ways a Democrat in many ways. Oh, um, progressive. Sort of being, very pro- yeah he, yeah exactly and 
you know, he did, um, he was leading in one district, in one county for a while in somewhere in the north, in the north, northeast, he was leading, but he lost that. But I think um, the actual issues contributed to that as well, because um, it felt like the Republicans, it felt Donald Trump did have a better stance on all those issues. So it was, it was a bit like either Trump or America's down. That, it was, that was this, and that was, and that's correct. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that is right because it was, it was either vote Trump, okay, stop this mess, put an end to this, all these problems, or you know, make sure America declines. Um, and Gary Johnson didn't have a good policy plan. He was full on progressive. Austin Peterson, at least, he was quite skeptical of many things. Um, he actually didn't support selling drugs to kids. But he got a big um, backlash for that by the libertarians because he didn't support selling drugs for kids. Um, that did cost him. But you know, we need Trump. You know, we need Trump right now. So yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully the Libertarian Party learns its lesson from yeah. uh, from this time that trying to appeal to the SJWs and political yeah. correctness is not the is not the not the way to go. And rather than it's not, you know, yeah. just throwing your hands up in the air and uh, claiming <laughs> you know all of the uh, the people are stupid. Yeah, so I, I definitely think that the Libertarian Party uh, in, in in the future, they rather than you know, yeah, talking down to the people, saying, uh, "Well, you just you know, you're too you know ignorant," or you know, rather than <laughs> trying to you know uh, uh, reshape uh, you know p uh, public opinion to what they want, they need to explain how liberty uh, you know is good for them. Like say that you know we don't disagree with your life goals. That these are our solutions to it, rather than say that no, you know, you need to be, you know, re-educated -educa uh, into, you know, what's good for you. Yeah, um, and many in many ways they were anti-libertarian in many ways. I mean, it's just it's a deviation of libertarianism itself. So it's a, it's left libertarianism that doesn't make sense at all, and that's what we saw with Gary Johnson. Um, but you know. Let's hope they learn from it. Let's hope they actually choose someone who's good next time. Because yeah. I would like to see the Libertarians win a bit, not the presidency, but you know, I would like to see them actually get something in the elections. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, all of the good work that Ron Paul did in his 2008 2012 yeah. presidential runs just uh, completely. Uh, came to a halt in the in this election. Yeah. So it was just yeah, really disappointing. Yeah, yeah, I like Ron Paul. He's one of my favorites. Mm. But um, yeah, you know, he's he is Republican though in the Republican Party, which I think is quite good, because in that way he can sort of introduce a bit more, a bit more libertarianism maybe to the Republican Party, um, which is all right, um, because libertarianism is, after all, a right-wing ideology. It is quite close to conservatism in many in many ways. Um, so yeah, you know, let's let's see what happens, but. Trump is here right now. Yeah, yeah that's for the next so election. We talk and talk about uh, what, what a Trump presidency will now look like. Uh, yeah, we should. So, yeah, so obviously, I mean, Trump has to fulfill his his election promises. Yes, he which does. Means the wall <laughs> definitely has to be built. Yeah. Uh, the ban Muslims. Uh, ban Muslim immigration. That definitely yeah. has to happen as well. Repealing and replacing Obamacare. That definitely has to happen. Yeah. Regula regulations, taxes, all going down. Yeah, and also we're going to see, uh, well, hopefully a less uh, interventionist U.S. foreign policy. I mean, uh, uh, Trump has said he wants to get on with uh, with the Russians. Vladimir Putin yeah. has already come yeah. out and said he wants to restore full relations with America. He has, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, he, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's no, uh, obviously there'll be a uh, settlement in the Syrian conflict, so you know, there'll be yeah. no, no uh, there'll be, uh, we won't have a no-fly zone happen. Russian jets won't get exactly, down. exactly. There, there won't be a World War Three. That's relieving. Mm -hmm. um, we will see cooper cooperation between Russia and the United States. 
um, we will actually hopefully we will send we will see an end to this Cold War rhetoric because it's it's really it's really triggering <laughs> to see all this Cold War rhetoric going on. Um, but it's over now. You know, he wants to reach out to Russia. He he wants to work together to actually um, defeat ISIS, and that's yeah. what we want. Well, he said that, you know, he doesn't want to be involved in, you know, nation-building, like what, yeah. they, what they tried to do yeah. in the Iraq and, and Libya, mm-hmm. and that, you yeah. know, all America should do is just, you know, make sure that, you know, you bond the bad guys and then, you know, quit while you're ahead. Exactly. It yeah. needs to leave the world alone. You know, worry about America, worry about what's within your borders, unless maybe it poses a threat to your a direct threat to your national security, maybe yeah. in that case, that's fine. Yeah. But you know, focus what's within your borders. And he said, uh, he said to NATO, you know, pay for your own defense, like because the US yeah. has still uh, got bases all over Europe, and he's like, well, why, yeah. do, why do we, you know, still need to need to fund that? And you know, he's in favor of a strong defense at home as well. He is, which is good. I mean, they're, they're spending a lot on defending other countries, um, which. You don't need that anymore because you don't need Japan. It's not it's not 1945 anymore. You know, yeah. it is it is 2016 right now. So you know you don't need to defend Japan anymore. They need to pay for their own security because this is just unfair on Americans. These these are taxpayer money. Remember, it's taxpayer money. Um, but he also did say he did say that he will um, improve infrastructure. He said the infrastructure will be second to none yesterday. Um, some government spending there is okay so you know but with the debt that's a big problem isn't it um you should do something about the debt yeah i mean and entitlements uh, entitlements and their debt yeah. are real killers so yeah the uh, trying to balance the budget was going to be difficult for or uh, any president who got in power so yeah the, trump still has his challenges uh in that area Look, uh, but we still don't know, um, you know, what, uh, you know, ultimately whether Trump will be a good president or not, whether the economy will prosper yeah. again or or not. But yeah, but he was definitely the best choice. He is. I mean, he. We must remember that he will renegotiate the deals because that's important. Because the thing is, he's not. People are saying he's against global trade. Well, the thing is, he just wants equality when it comes to global trade because China subsidizes, illegally subsidizes its exports. Um, and America doesn't. And China has the advantage, an unfair advantage. And he's simply trying to make sure that it's equal. It's an equal playing field. Um, and that's why he wants to renegotiate um, all those trade deals because America is losing jobs, quite frankly. Yeah. So, uh, so definitely, there's a there's a lot to do. It's gonna it's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be difficult, but yeah, we've um, no. He's definitely determined. I mean, you know, he's you know quit. Uh, you know, he could have just easily just you know continued to be a successful businessman and reality TV star, but instead he decided to yeah you know, risk his uh, lifelong uh, reputation and run for president. He's risking his life full stop by doing this. Um, you know, being president of the United States is not very safe, let's be honest. Mm. Um, I mean, there's already, what is it, uh, the Mexican drug lord has already put a bounty on his head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we saw that, didn't we? Um, you, you can blame the neocons for that, <laughs> for, this, for this danger. But, um, you know, the thing is, uh, many of our goals have been achieved. You know, Trump is elected, but we need to look at the world as well. What's going to happen next in the world as well in terms of the future? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So the f- next year we've got uh, elections in Germany, France, and the Netherlands. So in Fran- France, yeah. it's their presidential election. Uh, <laughs> Uh, given that how the polls were were wrong, and given the, the yeah. how the polls are already leaking in Europe, Le, uh, Marine Le Pen looks like a good chance to be France's next president. Yeah, Mar- Marine Le Pen is. I love Marine, and you know the thing is, I want to see governor of France province because France is now a province. I want to see the governor of France province um, go down. Um, and I want to see the Supreme Leader Merkel go down because yeah. I it's, mean, it's almost imperialistic, their organization. 
I mean, yeah, Germany, uh, they, yeah, they have their elections later, later next year. And of course, um, you know, Merkel with a open door policy. I mean, there's the yeah. alternative for Germany party, AFD, yes. they're polling at about 15% now, but, uh, I would say that that uh, share of the vote is low and would be significantly higher in an election. So I'm yeah. actually hopeful that they could actually come first and, you know, be the major coalition partner in a German government. Yeah, they can. But I think, uh, I think Marine's election will be, will be much more probable, would be much more possible um, than the uh, AFD. Um, and because the thing is, uh, we see these, this anti-EU rhetoric for good reason in Europe, and you know, um, Marine wants to um, actually promote a Frexit now, and people want a Frexit. Um, mm. So you know, I think she, I feel like she'll win. You know, um, the Bam. polls. Don't believe the polls. <laughs> and uh, Gert Wilders as well in the Netherlands. I mean, he's, yeah. he's polling at near 40% at the moment. I mean, <sighs> he's been in the Netherlands, uh, been, been an MP for what, nearly 16 years now. And he's, yeah. you know, warned about the, about the uh, growing uh, f threat from Islamic immigration. And he's being proved right. And it looks like he... You know, might might rise rise to the top and finally be able to change uh, to the the Netherlands to back to the country that you know they used to be. Yeah, um, because in Holland, in the, in the in the Netherlands, there's actually quite a big um, sort of anti-EU sentiment in the Netherlands. Um, many people actually thought that next the next exit will be the Netherlands. Um, uh, that's what people are saying. So, and Geert Wilders is pushing for that and. If he's elected, we will have that. So yeah. I mean, yeah, for the best. Uh, the the globalists and the progressives, like yeah, uh, it's and it's going to all fall apart for them next year. I mean, uh, we've had two big victories this year with Brexit and now Trump. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's well, it's definitely going to encourage, uh, you know, uh, like-minded people in in Euro in European countries and also the people of those countries that if if these two uh, elections can go can go the people's <laughs> way, then it can. Yeah, way as well, and of course, hopefully, it'll lead to some change in Australia as well. I mean, yeah, um, Pauline was celebrating Trump's victory. She was outside the Parliament House. We saw her video, um, drinking champagne. Um, she actually had um Nelson, the uh, it was the Trump economist who's working for her now. Mm. Um, he was there as well. She was celebrating, which was really nice to see. Um, you know, Pauline had it right. Pauline, he didn't care about Trump tapes. She, Sorry, she. She didn't care about Trump tapes. Um, she was like, you know, it's normal. People say that. That's how it is. Um, she took it like an adult. Um, you know, and Malcolm Turnbull, he said he, we will work together with and the new president. Hopefully it gives... Um... No, uh, obviously, uh, Pauline, a uh, few MPs in the in the coalition, a bit more of uh, yeah. courage to speak out on issues such as you know Islamic immigration, uh, you know take on multiculturalism, the ABC, and the mainstream media. You know, stop stop trying to not trigger you know Buzzfeed and <laughs> organisations like that, or listen yeah. to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw all those comments on on SBS posts where people were like, people were just saying bad things to Malcolm because he's saying he wants to cooperate. So what, well, people well, want well, war? Well, Is that yeah, what they well, want? What's he going to say? Screw America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, are they expecting him to actually see several relations with? with uh, I just don't understand. I just cannot understand. It's a good thing to work with the leader of America. You know, you may not, you may not like him. I think it's true if, if you don't like him. But, um, you know, we can't just actually um, not be allies anymore. We need to be allies, yeah. and Trump is good for the world. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And we saw uh, Corey Bernardi with his "Make Australia Great Again." Cast. Yes. Yeah. The, it's spreading here. You know, um, it'll be great to see Pauline wearing the hat. I want to get that hat um, because I want to make Australia great again. Um, Corey loved Trump. He said he'll be really good.
Um, and I love Corey. <laughs> so we'll conclude by saying there is hope for the world. I mean, yeah. uh, the regressive left, social justice warriors, and the politically correct can be defeated. Uh, we at the Unshackled are going to be continuing to do all we can to, to break the chains of control. And we'll have plenty more commentary on the side about the election in the days to come. Yeah. Um... I want to say that because we we posted a message on our Facebook um, on our Facebook page, um, you know this is a big victory for us. I mean, the Unshackled, we at the Unshackled, were working towards this. It's what we wanted. It happened. There's hope, and you know we want to thank our readers as well for you know for, for your devotion and your appreciation of our work. We want to thank the Trump groups. We love the Trump groups, um, you know, because that, it, it was extraordinary to see their devotion to Trump. Um, but it, there's hope. Not over yet. The regressive left, as I said, is rallying um, protests in cities. Um, but, you know, we are in the upper ground now yeah. and they are down there. They're on the defensive. They are, yeah. So, <laughs> so make sure that you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. And don't forget to keep... Uh, we've also got our YouTube channel as well, and we're starting to put up a few uh, other videos as well, aren't we? We are, yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, we, I, we made a video on, again, Hillary it was, um, just to... Just a last minute reminder for our American viewers. Um, but yeah, we are putting up videos. Look for more videos. More videos are coming. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's it for us on this special episode today. We will see you again next Tuesday, uh, where I'm sure there will be more developments, not just in the US election, but also around the world as well in this uh, very uh, exciting time. Yeah, I mean, the triggering will spread. We will report on that. Um, but the celebrations will spread as well, and they already are spreading. I mean, we are celebrating. So, you know, have fun. Enjoy this moment. Um, it's, it's a great time to be alive. We'll see you next time. We will. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.